Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, we got prestigious to talk about. Why were they so popular? By the pros from the mid 80s through the 90s. And they're still pretty popular today. All right, guys, so we're going to be talking about head prestigious today. I got my man, my buddy, Angus here with me. He is a prestige collector, but not of the present day prestigious. He's got very, very specific prestigious that he wants and likes. And we're like turning back the clock on some of these rackets to... Um, late 80s, 90s ones. Um, if you guys don't know, I'll give you a quick history of Prestige's. Uh, the Prestige Pro was launched in 1987 as a player stick, right? I guess they're all considered player sticks back then because it was before the, the invention of wide bodies. And they were... 600 centimeters squared, which is what size? Actually, 89.5 square inches. 89.5 square inches. That's pretty small. So people think mid is like 90. Yeah, it's a little smaller than that. Now, why did they measure 89.5? Because head was the only one that measured the inside of the racket and not the outside. Uh, so the only company that did that. So on the inside, it registers 89.5. Now, let's talk quickly about the technology behind these rackets. Um, it's one of the few rackets that actually have a capped, uh, you know, they call it capped. Right, so I call it covered. They covered the strings, um, and I was like, when when I my first experience in the what year was that? 1989, when I was stringing rackets for the first time uh, at a tennis shop in the summer, summer job. Absolutely hated these rackets to string. Um, I'm sure Angus, you can share with me some of your bad experiences with it too uh as it literally like this is everybody's nightmare mm -hmm. nightmare to string mm -hmm. um, but not not only because of the caps like the grommets were falling apart with the caps you know being in the way yeah <laughs> so but yeah in, enough about my nightmares um but supposedly this cap technology and cap, I always thought cap meant that it just capped and clo enclosed. But that's actually not what it means. No. No. Can you tell them what it means? It stands for uh, Computer Assisted Protection. So I don't see a computer. <laughs> I don't see a computer assisted. I see protection, though. Yeah. Uh, maybe a computer generated this, is what I'm thinking. Uh, like, it's a uh, computer generated he head guard. Maybe this was like the first ever 3D design thingy. <laughs> In 1987. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Hey. I can see that today. Yeah. <laughs> so what this does is it protect the racket. It protected the strings. Um, they were saying that it protected the string from the dirt on the clay so that it can't get inside. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, and it and it also made it more aerodynamic. So I can I can feel that though. I can understand that. Part. I I can too. Um, and I think it's a good way to add weight to a racket. That too. Yeah. Is weight. So cap technology, and then let's talk about Toron now. Is it called Toron? Toron. 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 Juan. Juan, yeah. Yeah. So Toron was one of the major factors in this racket. 
I mean, I growing up thought it was a stiffening agent that made it firmer, kind of like braiding, whatever. Um, what is that true? Um, Toron or however you want to pronounce it, it's really just um, a different brand of Kevlar, uh, very similar to what you find in a pro staff. Um, and that may also help explain why these two rackets sort of have a bit of a similar feel. Um, I, I think, my personally speaking, anytime a racket has Kevlar in it, it's always going to feel a little bit softer. Not firmer? Softer for me. Oh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's my own take on it. I mean, they did put Kevlar into that shoe with uh, the Babolats, those Mach twos, Mach threes. Oh. They lightened them up and they wove Kevlar into the 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 cotton or whatever it is, the stitching oh. to keep you in. Oh. So I'm that's so why I'm guessing is it was a stiffening agent instead of a softening agent. I think. Well, I think you're right in the sense that it made the racket more rigid. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the racket from just like the, the overall stiffness of the racket, not whether or not it had Kevlar or Tauron in it. Mm -hmm. um, and that prestige and, you know, the older Pro Staff, they, they all just felt a little bit softer to me mm -hmm. than modern rackets. Okay, but this was, I mean, in my opinion, this was a, a lot softer than a Pro Staff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if the way that they built it, maybe it's the thin, the thin throat here um, that made it flex more. Yep. But this was, I mean, in my mind, this was like the hardest racket to play with, especially after um, wide bodies came out and other things came out. I was like, I don't know how people can play with this thing. Yep. And to string, because it's so soft that if you don't mount it right, you're going to warp it. That is true. Many a times did I have to pry the racket off the machine because it like it was just so soft that it just kind of moved so much. Yeah. Um, especially you know these guys. Oh man. Especially these guys. Wow. Oh. Look at the shape of that. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Looks like a. Yeah, it looks like it's warped. <laughs> looks like looks like it's looks, looks a little warped there. Looks like Adam Sandler's uh, head, <laughs> the egg shape. So yeah, I mean that. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't horrible. Yeah, it's fine. But so. But in the mid '80s to the mid through the '90s, these rackets, right, were known to be the most widely used rackets on tour. I mean, I guess if you turn back the clock, um, certain people that used it. I mean, the first person that comes into my mind was Boron Ivan Isevich. Yeah. Um, he had that big lefty serve. Uh, Basically, could hit like 60 aces and still lose the set to Agassi. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and, then, and then there was a version of this that Mooster played with, and and then uh, don't forget Emilio Sanchez, who who also used it. But um, so why why was this so popular? Well, so. I'll use this one for example because it's always yeah, strong. Yeah. So I think this was so popular. Um, by the way, before I started playing with pro stabs, I was actually a prestige person. Uh, I had an iPrestige and then I got a uh, reissue uh, prestige classic 600. Um, so I think one of the probably the main reason why these rackets were so popular among the pros was that during that time, Topspin really wasn't a big proponent, a component of the game, especially among the pros. So this racket was unique because this was one of the few, probably the only mid-sized racket, thin beam that had a dense string pattern that helped facilitate flatter hit hitters. Um, but at the same time, this racket was so whippy that if you want to hit topspin with it, you can. You absolutely can still hit topspin with it. But the the dense string pattern, eighteen by twenty, in a small head size, so this made it really, really dense pattern. And I think it just helped uh, players at the time to hit a flatter ball, which was the style of play of that era. Um, I forgot the eighteen twenty was another reason why I hate stringing it too. In a small frame. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
when you like, especially when you when you try weaving it, and you can't get your finger through mm. the thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I broke so many strings in the frame and had to do it twice so many times yeah. back then because I was just so pissed off, especially gut. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I kept uh, another reason that, well, like going back to more stringing stories, was like I kept forgetting this had twenty crosses, so I kept. I always uh, miscount it. I counted like, you know, 16, 19, like the usual string pattern. Like, yeah. No, I counted 19 and I was like, you short. Oh. Yeah, no. And then yanking all the string out of the cap. Oh. oh. You just, <laughs> <laughs> just cut it. Start yeah. over. Yeah. Uh, I, when people used to, when I used to tell people that this was the most widely used racket on tour, people would be like, why? Right? And I would tell them, because they don't need power, mm -hmm. right? They just need the racket to be kind of an extension of their arm. Yeah. And they need it to be controllable so that they can control depth and uh, touch. Yeah. And th that's what this does. I mean, this racket ain't going to help you. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you're, I don't know if you're better off playing with wood, but it's damn close. It's, yeah. Um... Because I have so much experience with these prestigious and you know now the pro stabs, I will even go on to say that this racket or any of the prestige mids, they were more difficult to use than the 6085 pro stab mm -hmm. or the 90. Yeah. Um, again, it all comes back down to the small head frame and the dense string pattern. Because the, the denser pattern you have, the smaller your sweet spot. Um, and unlike the Pro Staff, which was more head light, this is not as head light. I think the Pro Staff unstrung was about like nine points head light. Mm -hmm. This unstrung was about like seven points. It's it's minor, but you notice it in air that this is uh, this is not as whippy as the Pro Staff, uh, which is a lot more reasons why I thought that these prestige mids were more difficult rackets to use than even the 6085. But I will say that there is no racket from this era or today's time that feels as good as this racket. Not even the Pro Staff. I agree. I can't yeah. play with it because I'm not just I'm not that good. But I feel like all the Pro Stock rackets are derived from these. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, they they hit a they hit like butter man. So the, all those TXG eleven. I mean, you tell me the numbers. I don't know these things I, that well. Uh, Do you know those? Uh, comments can fill that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, you know those numbers that I'm talking about that people talk about. Everybody using basically the one racket that's head makes just for pros. Um, it, it's all derived from this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it, it's a. Uh, Definitely a classic and definitely a keeper. If you guys have these rackets, if you guys have these rackets, I mean, I mean, keep them. Or if you want to make a couple bucks, eBay them. We might buy them from you. <laughs> or do what I do, just keep it in the plastic for the last close to 20 years now. Uh-oh. I think that grip's toast. <laughs> That's fine. It's in the plastic. Yeah, I think it'll disintegrate. <laughs> After you take that plastic off, it'll just like be sawdust. But it says head's finest calfskin. It's the finest. Yeah, it's the driest now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, if you got it, keep it. If you need to make some money, sell it. Okay, that's what we're telling you to do because these are really, really good plastic rackets. And they're so pretty. Yeah, that's true. I'm not a big fan. But keep it anyways. All right. I want to thank my man Angus for hanging out with me today and uh, talking to me about the prestige. Um, I, I'm just feeling the gloss. <laughs> no. it brings back memories. Bad yeah. memories. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Coach Good. Check yep. this out. Swing Vision got new commercial out. Oh. Check out his James Blake and, and Ronick. Right. Oh my god. He's still playing.
I mean, he's still playing. Whoa. Whoa. What? Dude. Dude. That's damn fast. I can do it. I can do it, dude. Back in the day, I could I could do that. I could totally do that, dude. You can do that. You can do that. Let's go, man. We can show them how it's done. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All Let's right. Go. All right. All right. 85 miles per hour. That can't be right. No, that's definitely right. That's definitely right, man. 88 miles per hour. That's not a gigawatt. One more, one more. Watch me, watch me. 78 miles per hour. Hey, man. <laughs> Something wrong with this program. Nah, that's just you, bro. L l you try. You try. Right, Let's okay, see what I'll you do. It. I'll do it. You're going to go 69 right here. 127 miles per hour. You can check out your serve speed on Swing Vision 2. Doc, we got an issue.